Joining us now uh, from Kiev is Igor Novikov, former advisor to Ukrainian President uh, Zelensky. Igor, thanks so much for joining us on this. We appreciate it. You just heard from our correspondents on the ground there talking especially about the negotiations that are happening um, in Istanbul. Do you trust Moscow when it comes to these negotiations? Do you trust something's actually going to be coming out of these talks? Well, the simple answer is no. Uh, look, we had uh, tens of thousands civilians killed. So, you know, there's, there's no way you can trust a country that did that. But at the same time, like, look, people on the ground are hopeful but skeptical. That's that's what I would describe it like. Uh, basically, look, I, I, it looks like Russia is trying to regroup, mm. buy some time and move its forces to Donbass where they been enjoying relative success militarily because in Kiev they're losing they're losing badly so you know they need to sell it to their domestic audience as well that's why you know they're pretending to negotiate that's how people understand it on the ground in Kiev how does how does Moscow how does Russia guarantee security in these negotiations we know that's one of the asks coming from um, Ukraine how do you expect that to happen what do you expect the Ukrainians want the Zelensky government wants when it comes to these security guarantees well, basically, what's being discussed is uh, a very similar solution to NATO's Article 5. So um, basically, there are a number of uh, military partners, uh, ma major Western powers, who agree to uh, three days of negotiations in case of another Russian invasion. And then they agree to close down Ukrainian skies and provide us with weapons. So it's not a question of sending soldiers in, but you know, providing us with weapons quickly and effectively. That's the kind of security guarantees that are being discussed at the moment. Uh, will Russia agree to them? I mean, I have my doubts because from certain Russian movements that we're observing now uh, to the north, of Kiev, and also given on what their propaganda is saying domestically, I don't think we're near the end of this conflict just yet. What, what do you make of Ukraine seemingly being open to abandoning efforts to join NATO? Well, uh, look, I mean, it's been 34 days of this war. I mean, we've lost uh, hundreds, tens of thousands of people. So, like, NATO, there's been a certain amount of disillusionment in NATO as an idea, right? So people have become more pr pragmatic. They want security. So, you know, if NATO is ready to welcome Ukraine and we get that se security, of you know, given by Article 5, that's great. If not, let's not kind of waste time and human lives. Let's find another kind of security architecture that would save our civilians, our kids and our women. And, you know, it's very pragmatic, uh, but, you know, we've suffered enough to kind of to expect that. Um, you actually told my colleague Hallie, uh, Hallie Jackson yesterday that this war could be over in two weeks if Ukrainians are given, quote, all the weapons we need to push Russia back. Can you expand on that a little bit? Well, uh, at the moment, militarily, Ukrainian army is motivated, it's professional, and the only thing we're missing is weapons. Like, look, my cousin is uh, fighting, you know, the Russians uh, in the east on the front lines, and he has a 40-year-old or a 30-year-old Kalashnikov. That's all he has. You know, um, if we got given, you know, tanks, if we got given planes, if we got given, you know, more sophisticated weaponry, uh, Ukrainian army is more than capable of pushing Russia back. I mean, what you're seeing now has been achieved, you know, with a relatively small amount of javelins and laws, and that's it. And just Ukrainian spirit. You know, just ima imagine what we could do to defend ourselves if we actually had more than weaponry. That, that's the most important part. And also closing down our skies. I mean, like, look, uh, Russia, the first thing that Russia tried doing was destroying our air force and our anti-aircraft systems. Mm. They failed. But, you know, uh, if we had proper anti-aircraft systems, that would mean Russia wouldn't be able to send those cruise missiles and those bombers. It wouldn't be able to kill our civilians, destroy our infrastructure and hurt our army. So we'd be able to defend ourselves way better uh, at, a far, at, at a far smaller cost, unfortunately. Igor Novikov, thank you so much. And please stay safe. We appreciate you joining us this hour.